Hi everyone, it's Friday the 10th of June and it's 12.30 in the morning and in this video I've got a model railway update for you. I have been quite busy. In fact I've actually started modelling. It's only taken two years but I have started doing the modelling bit now that I've rearranged the track and got that the way I want it. Um, I think it was the main hold up, I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do with the track. I got, you know, just stuck doing other things <clears throat> you know just couldn't work up the energy to do anything with the railway so but I'm there now <laughs> so what we're going to do we're going to start this end of the track which is up by the bedroom window and work towards basically the bedroom door um, it is a bit messy on here it's not as bad as it was like an hour ago I have had a bit of a clean up on here but uh, here we go so on this corner I have actually fitted a little cottage with an LED light on the inside it's only sort of like the lounge area bit that lights up because everywhere else is cardboarded off and I thought that would just be fine I don't want the whole thing lit up we have got a little lantern here I've used one of the um, lantern style street lights my stepdad gave me they are actually wired up and working. I don't think they're going to show up that well in this light. You can just about see the street light there. What I'll do at the end of the video, I will film this in the dark and tack that on the end. Only because I can't get past you to get to the light switches at the minute. Um, yeah, what else have I done? I've done the grass. I've got the brick perimeter wall in. Or stone perimeter wall in with a little drive entrance there and a gate and some flowers to make a little flower border, a couple of trees. The car I've just sat there pretty much to gauge you know how big or how wide I wanted to drive and the gap there. Um, <clears throat> could have gone for a wider drive if I wanted to but I'm happy with that. The wooden fence as well that's all in place to separate this from the line and a little shed up in the corner here which actually looks like it's meant to be like a section from an old brick van or something like that that's been converted to a, a garden shed so I thought that would be quite fitting to go in a garden really rather than a trackside shed which is what I was going to do with it to begin with but yeah I'm pretty certain it is meant to be um, like an old brake van because it's actually got a little sticky out I don't know what you actually call it I don't know my brake van over there, I don't think it's got one, just bear with me a second. Yeah, it has. It's got this little bit there on the other side of it. So, <laughs> it's literally like I got a brake van like this and just went and then put a shed door and window in it. Which I have seen done in real life, so I thought, yeah, that, that would look quite good in the corner of the garden. Um, the gate is not glued yet. Um, that's for two reasons. One, I need to get some brown paint of some sort, just some enamel revel paints or something. I haven't got any in brown. Just to do that, and I thought it would actually be easier to ballast the driveway before I glue that down. Just like I did the grass before I added all of this. Um, the only thing is, I haven't got the colour ballast I want. I've got the ballast for the track, which is grey. Um, but I wanted like a, like a gravel or a shingle sort of colour. So I found, a th so far I've found the closest I could find for that. Um, but I can't get anything until next Wednesday actually. So that's on hold. But I think apart from the driveway and the gate, this corner is pretty much done unless I decide to put like a tiny, I don't know if you can get things like tiny little lawn mowers or other garden implements I could perhaps dot around you know lean up against a shed or something just for a bit of decor I've even got a little footpath put in there to the driveway across the grass and even one round here with a little flower bed as well <clears throat> going from the back door here to the shed door or shed door to the back door I don't even know which way around that is supposed to be actually it's just like two little lean-tos on the cottage so it's, well Use your own imagination, that's what I'll say there. You can, it can be either or. Let's glue on the roof there with a bit of uh, grass on it. 
I think what I will do is probably eventually is just add some more green grass on here just to cover that with some bushes and things. Same here and further up. In fact, that brings me on to the next corner, which is off camera at the minute. I'll just move a box of um, border plants and trees out of the way. But yeah, right where that house is on that corner, I will zoom in a bit for you. There we go. I'll just put that there to see if I want to put another building on a corner, but I've decided not to. What I'm going to do instead is turn that into a little field. A little grazing field for um, cows, because uh, when my stepdad was um, getting rid of all his double O gauge stuff, he gave me a load of figures and whatnot. I don't even know where my tub of people is at the minute. Oh yeah, I do. It's down here. I might see if there's anything in there that might be suitable to um, perhaps put in the garden here. Apart from the car. Oh look, there's a Hot Wheels car in there as well. That's not meant to be there. But um, yeah, there was a couple of cows and a horse. So I thought, so I'm sort of going for a, quite a countryside theme up this end of the layout at least. That's I'm on short. There we go. That's not going to stay up this end. That's not going to work on the edge here. I've got a feeling my um, locos are going to smash straight into that. Anyway, I'm just going to put some grass down. I've got some more of that, this um, wooden fence stuff. I don't know if I'll have enough, but you know, I just thought a nice little grazing field for some cows. Somewhere the cows are actually on here. Yeah, there's two cows and a horse. So I was actually thinking, on the other corner, up the other end, of perhaps making a little paddock for the horse. Because to me, there's, well at least in my mind, I can't think of anything else to do on here. Unless I find another little cottage to put on the opposite corner. Um, and on the opposite corner to this one. And then another field where my controller currently is. But then that looks too symmetrical and too sort of man-made and I don't really want that. Right, so that's the plan for that corner. The um, builder's yard thing or whatever you want to call it, farm yard. I was just playing around with those buildings and whatnot just seeing if I liked something up this end or something like that up this end when I can English. <sighs> Apparently tonight is not the night for me to English. Anywho, yeah. Um, but I was also thinking of making those buildings as part of the Preserve Railway yard and like having the entrance to it down here, the road entrance. <clears throat> as, uh, as I've mentioned before, that is the theme I've gone for. Just so I'm not restricted to what rolling stock I can use. It's well, that's pretty much the main reason why I chose a Preserve Railway theme. So, yeah, uh, let's work along, shall we? Um, other than that, I'm not really sure what I'm going to put in the, up this end yet. I was thinking of... Well, I want to put the hotel up here somewhere. Um, although I haven't thought about it, it might work better up the other end. Or a bit closer to the main station. I say main station, it's the only station. Um... Yeah, I'm still playing around with building placement. It's one reason why I haven't got any roads in yet. Which is actually the next thing I want to do. Actually, the next thing I want to do is wire up the um, track isolators. So I can actually use my train yard. I'm not too fussed about the points. I'm sure I can reach over and just flick them by hand for now. Um, although I suppose if I do the points, then that's at least two-thirds of the electrics done out of the way. <clears throat> Anywho, let's, uh, let's just move you down a bit further. Right, and just drop you down here to where my switch boxes are. You may notice that I've gone from two to three. This is the one I've actually built to um, operate the lighting. Don't think I'm going to switch anything else. I can't think of anything else that I would need to switch on this layout. 
um, but I will need to use, well this one is in use, that's for the cottage and street light on the corner there. Um, but I've actually worked out I will need to use at least four more, which would leave, so far, unless I can think of anything else, three spare switches. Well, there'll be at least two spare switches, and I suppose if I needed any more I could just add another one of these somewhere. Um, but yeah, these are all wired up, and I've got a little um, bus bar in there. I'll show you what I've used, actually. It's from an old, um, old consumer unit you know, or fuse box. Let's put a smaller one of these in. It's actually about that length from there to my finger. I've just glued it in the top here. So that's my neutral but neutral bus bar, or the negative bus bar. And I've daisy chained all the switches. The power comes from the power jack on the back. It just uses a 12 volt power supply I got here. This is a 3 amp one, which should be plenty to run the lights on here. Because I doubt I'll have everything lit up at the same time, at least not for long. And I'm not riding these, riding these, running these LEDs very hard either. In fact, some of them I'm going to put different resistors on to dim them down a bit, like the LEDs that are in the hotel. Or I might just change the LEDs in the hotel actually. I'll change the lighting in the hotel altogether. I don't know yet. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I deal with the hotel. But yeah, it just plugs into a little jack in the back. Right there. One of the reasons I did that is because it's easier when I pack this away, you know, when I fold it all up. And two, if this fails, which in my mind, as this is all electronics in here, this is the most likely fail point, I can just unplug it, find another 12 volt power supply of the similar rating to this one, and plug it straight in. I don't want to do any messing around with any wiring or anything. So the positive from that goes, I think, to this switch, and then obviously I've just daisy chained them all along. Oh my god, was that a tedious task, and I actually burnt out one of my soldering tips. It's on its last legs anyway. I did buy some more soldering tips, but I bought the wrong ones. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's an another thing on my shopping list for next week. Soldering iron tips, ballast for that driveway, and I want some brown paint for the fences I will before I actually go buying that I'll see if my stepdad's got any spare for that he's got a lot of scenery sort of um, paint colours in his little stash I haven't all the paints I've got other than what I've got spray cans for when I'm restoring uh, matchbox cars and whatnot all the others are just sort of well just standard ordinary colours there's nothing for scenery there's no greens or browns or anything So I had to rub my can because my throat's getting a bit dry. <clears throat> Blah. Right. So there's my station. That's not changed apart from moved to suit the new track layout. So it's gone from here to here. Um, <clears throat> one issue I got to resolve with that, and I found part of the resolution for it. Because um, this building is up on this high platform, for some reason there's actually four doors um, in the back of this, so there's two this side, two that side, but of course they just drop straight off the platform, there's no ledge or anything there. So I've decided I'm going to build something, I don't thought I'm going to need steps, but I found this in my tub of sort of card and other bits and bobs, I've got card and paper with like brick print and all sorts in there and some spare building and building parts. So yeah, I thought got some steps, I might be able to use those. They are a bit low though, but if I don't use those, I've got you know an idea that I can go from at least. Right. Uh, while we're in this area, I've sort of been mocking up some buildings for a street there. I don't think I'm gonna leave any of them there. It's just a rough idea. I've got that smaller shop there. Could be an alleyway or something going between them. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I've got the Swan Pub, which apparently a lot of models have at least one of those. So I was told the other day on a Facebook group. Well, I had three of them. don't know how I ended up with three of them, but I had three of them. 
emphasis on had. Now, here's what they should look like. This is one I got off my stepdad when he um, was getting rid of all his double O gauge stuff to go O gauge. I need to go back to double O gauge. Um, less than it, no, about a year later he went back to double O gauge. I'll have to get some photos of his layout actually. Um, but yeah, this needed a few repairs because some of the windows fell out just from storage and whatnot. In fact, I know he bought this on Marketplace. He bought a load of buildings on Marketplace uh, from someone here in town, actually. And whoever built these had used sticky tape to stick the windows in. And that had obviously just dried out over time and the windows just fell out. So I've actually glued the windows back in. In fact, that window could do it a bit of a clean. I get the window cleaner in. Um, one of the other ones, I thought, you know, I've got three. The other two were ex even more tattier than that one. They were pretty much only suitable for using for scratch building or using for parts to repair other buildings. So one of them I stole the windows from, which only needed a couple, I think, to replace on the one I just showed you. Um, and the other one I decided to turn into this little thing. I'm not going to keep that swan name above the door, I'm going to change that. Um, but believe it or not, that took me three attempts just to join this to this. Um, the reason it took three attempts is because I kept effing up the roof, basically. Um, I tried using the original roof the first time, it didn't work, I messed it up. Took the roof off the spares one that I was using for parts messed that one up and then decided to do it from scratch which is why this has got a completely different roof on to the other ones and that worked <laughs> it's the third time lucky um i wouldn't say i'm at least not at the moment i'm the best at making these little things but i quite like it there's a couple of gaps there but i'm gonna try and hide a few uh, blemishes as well there and some damage, I'm sure I can find a way to do that. <clears throat> it's not the only sort of building I made. I did modify <laughs> this one as well because it was actually twice as long as that and I cut it in half. Because it was too long for my layout but I really liked it. Um, in fact I've not done I thought I did this end, but it's not. I just noticed it's not level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh no. No, this was the end I did. That might be why it's not level. Anyway, yeah, there, there was. Well, actually, I cut one end off to take this down to three bays from four. But when I was playing with it over there, I thought it's still too long for this layout, so I just lopped another section off. <clears throat> So I've modified that one. In fact, the first section I lopped off of that, I turned into a little shed, and I'm not sure where that is at the minute. It could be in the box that's on the bed. Or, actually, I think the last place I saw it was underneath the railway. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, um, I've got some buildings here I don't even know if I'm going to use anywhere, like uh, this one. I think it's a mill, maybe. I don't think I've got anywhere where I could pop that. I do I'm going to put the little village school somewhere? Which I suppose could go somewhere near the um, hotel wherever I decide to put that. I've got this building as well, which I like, but I haven't really thought of a way to implement it into my village yet. Near a village green, maybe? Maybe in the big area here I could put like a village green. I'll just move the camera so you can actually see what I'm pointing at. You know, in this sort of area somewhere, somewhere here maybe, in the middle. So there could be like a little road between some of these buildings somewhere that goes through to the green. <clears throat> or a little park or something. Yeah. I didn't think I would actually enjoy this as much as I am. I want to keep working on this corner and I want to finish it, you know, the one where my um, cottage is. And I, I sort of discovered that once you start doing stuff like this, it gets kind of addictive, as well as satisfying. <clears throat> right, turn around. 
around. Ooh. Just explain what the other two switch boxes are for anyone new. Nearly forgot about them. So that one's going to be for the um, track isolators because I am running DC, not DCC. So to prevent locos on the sides from running around on their own, you isolate them. So that's what these switches are for. So these will all be in the off position when they're not in use. So I'll just have this external loop running. And when I get bored with that, I can just take it into the siding. Whichever one is free in the yard, I switch on, wrong switch, I switch on, park it up, switch it off, and then whichever loco I want to use on one of the other um, sidings, I just switch that one on. Simple. Um, that's what I had before, before I changed all the tracks, and I only had four of them, so I had to add two more down the bottom here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the four pairs of wires that I already had installed for these. I'll reuse those. I'm not sure if any of them are actually going to be long enough to go where I need them to. They should be, for the most part. Um, but if any aren't, I'm, I'm just going to lengthen them. I've got soldering iron, I've got heat shrink, I can lengthen them easy enough. And for the two new switches, I've got to feed in two more pairs of wires. I just paired them up in colours. Because it's literally just you know, a switch between the gap in the track, you know, to isolate it, that's all it is. It's not taking power to the track or anything like that, it's just oh, playing the guitar while I'm moving the uh, cables around. It's just, you know, switching it, isolating it, and that's it. And the next one is for the points. I've had to add one here. I drilled six holes and then discovered with the old track plan that I only needed five so I had a hole there but with this one I've actually added an extra point so I need six still not looking forward to doing that <laughs> I don't know why I'm just not looking forward to doing the points I want to do them because it's going to make it so much easier when I'm over here to change all the points and everything and I haven't got to try and lean over everything I mean it's not too bad now because I've got no buildings stuck down, apart from the train station, of course. But I can, you know, go either side of that to reach over there. Um, or if I have to, I can crawl under the um, table and go up the back there. Uh, yeah, so that's what that one's for. That was going to be a power switch for it, but I'm not sure I'm going to bother with that yet. I might. Might need an extra power supply for that though. <clears throat> um, I was also trying to decide, do I use this controller? I just had that screwed on there because I was using that one originally before I got my um, duet up the corner there. But now I've only got the one loop. I'm just wondering if I should just use this one. I have got an old Triang single controller. Which I could use, but I kind of use that one for um, <clears throat> my test track, which I made. For when I'm fixing and servicing locos. That's all I did. Just my idea I got from my stepdad, just a track on a bit of wood. So I just crocodile clip it on there, I made a cable up for it. Not that I couldn't do it with this one. I'm going to use this one again and then... Perhaps connect up the other one and just see which I prefer. I think that's the easiest um, solution, isn't it? Right. <clears throat> Moving along. Can't move you along too much more, otherwise you'll be out in the hallway. Right. <clears throat> so, that corner is the one I'm going to turn into a horse paddock, probably. Not sure what I'm going to do on this corner where my controller currently is. If I do just continue to use this controller, and it's not going to work because I've just pulled the cable off. Um, what I will do is make a little ledge on the front here, a hinged ledge, somewhere there that I can just sit it on. So when I fold all this away, I'll just fold that down flat. Because with it sticking up, it's not going to allow this to fold away. 
Um, <clears throat> obviously if I use the, the standard Hornby one here then I'm not going to need that ledge. But yeah, that's, that's fine where that is. Soldering iron is in the way. It's not plugged in, is it? Nope. Good. Put that one here out of the way. No doubt I'll still trip over the cable later. Right, I can't see what I'm doing. Hang on. There we go. So, that is the new train yard for the preserved railway, which I haven't got a name for it yet. I know I've gone for a preserved railway, but I still need a name for it, don't I? I'm not good at thinking of names though, so if anyone's got a suggestion, drop them down in the comments. Oh, while we're up this end, I also want to just pick your brains for a minute. So, I've got two different lots of telegraph poles here. I've got this one, with a big plastic base on, or I've got what I feel is a bit more of a realistic option, these ones. I've got the um, climbing foot pegs on there as well. I don't know, what do you guys think? This just looks like a more realistic option to me. And I've got more than enough of either for this layout. Um, so, yeah, I'm leaning towards these ones, but what do you guys think? Shall I use a smaller one? I'll put them side by side so you can actually see. I mean, height-wise, it's not too bad. These ones are a little bit taller, believe it or not. I am trying to hold them as close as possible. Um, we might put them next to the model itself. They do look a lot better as well. So what do you guys think? I think these ones, personally. These ones I'd probably take to a car boot or something. I did sell a bunch of um, stuff I didn't need at a car boot over the weekend. Right. <clears throat> yeah, where's my drink? Bring that down this end with me. Right. So, there is a few things I can stick down up this end, like some of the trackside stuff. Maybe this little shed. I put the roof on that because I didn't have one when I got it. It's like a, um, a felt roof. That's what I was going for with that one. Roofing felt. It's another little plastic building that I got off of my stepdad. <clears throat> so I need to decide where I want the trackside shed in the yard. Um, but the other side of the 08 there and the 33, there is a coal bunker. And I'm pretty certain you'll be able to see the um, water tower from here. I'm not sure if that's why I want the water tower yet. Um, but I sort of figured as that is where the locos would be serviced. I figured that would actually be probably the best spot to put the coal bunker and the water tower. You know. Where else would you fire up the steam locos? They'd be fired up in the yard, wouldn't they? So um, I have got a signal box, but I'm not sure. If I've got that in the right spot. It's not glued down, but it is up that end. I'm just about to see it. Where's my finger? Right there. Um, and I'm also not sure where to put the signals, if any. <laughs> um, I think one of my problems is I'm just interested in the uh, locos and the rolling stock and whatnot. I don't really know the ins and outs of how everything works. Um, I don't really know where to place things like the signal box and signals. I have got an electric signal as well that I would like to have working as well. At least one. It's just, uh, what do they call that? Two, um, oh I can't think of a bloody word. It's just two colours, it's just red and green, it hasn't got amber. So it's just like stop and go. It's my box of uh, street lamps and things here. Yeah, I've actually got a vintage one. I've got this one. It's a lovely one. It's probably worth a fair bit of money if it works. Um, who makes it? It's a Hornby 001. Oof. Oof. I would actually be interested to know what the 
value of that is and if it actually works. And they are not LEDs in there, but they're grain of wheat bulbs in tiny little green and red lenses. But that's what that is. That's going to be before LEDs really kicked off. But I have got a more modern one, which again I got off my stepdad. Took it off his um, his layout when he had that. I've got a bit of a more modern version. Went to three wires at the bottom. Um, so yeah, I, I won't have a clue where to put this. <laughs> so help in that respect would be uh, muchly appreciated. Now, one thing I haven't done at this end yet is glue down the buildings. And there's a reason for that because I, I figured it would be a lot easier to ballast, especially the, the um, good shed track, um, easier to ballast that before I glued everything in place, especially as it's in quite a hard to reach spot. Uh, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do inside the train shed yet. I've got a couple of options. I could like ballast the track and then, I don't know, do something for the rest of the ground in there. Or could do what I did with the when it was over this end of the uh, layout. It's just cut some of this um, sort of road looking card and uh, put that in there. And I suppose I could do both. I could put this down and then balance the track on top. What would you guys suggest? I mean, the easiest option would just be to cut this to size, glue it down, and then glue the doohickey on top. <laughs> I don't mind bouncing it as well, if that's what you think I should do. Or if there's other options. <clears throat> um, also, I've got a couple of repairs to do to the good shed here. Skylight has fallen through. I don't know how it's managed to fall through like that. The yeah, little veranda thing has fallen off of there and there's a chimney pot. Surprise, surprise. Missing off the office building. Well I suppose in theory I could line everything up and then glue down this ramp in the office building. Because that, they're all right being stuck down. I've got some goods there as well. You know, preserved railway so it will just be there for show. <laughs> to be honest I might even get a different train station because I'm not liking this one <laughs> um, I'll just, if I can find something I like better then I'll change it <clears throat> um, I think that's actually it oh and I've got this um, little thing to put up that is actually something when I get it in the light that my stepdad made himself at scratch built from just bits and pieces he had. Reminds me of a bit like a diesel bowser. So I was going to stick that over by the train shed somewhere as well as the, the um, point to fuel up the diesel locos. But I really need to get over that side of the layout to do all that. I feel up to it. I could do it tomorrow. I would do it now, but it's getting quite late. <laughs> um, I think that is it. But I did say I was going to uh, turn the lights off and just light up that cottage for you, didn't I? So, let's move you again. If you would like to come this way, please. I can't see what I'm doing, so I've got to turn the screen around. Oh, standing on the cable. And I will zoom you in for better viewing. And now on this side of you, I can plunge you into darkness. There's one. There's two. It's pitch black. And there it is. I actually have to say at this angle 
with that car park there and that little street light that actually looks quite nice. Can't quite see the cottage though because the bloody tree is in the way now. You can see it just lighting up at the back here, can't you? I'll just put my finger there and cover it up. <laughs> it was exactly the same at the front anyway. One thing I do like is how the light shadows those windows on my walls. It actually looks like a light coming through a real window onto my walls. <clears throat> but I think at the moment, probably because it's the only bit that I've nearly finished, that's my favourite part of this. Yeah, so there you go. So, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions etc please leave them down in the comment section below and as always thanks a lot for watching and i will talk to you again in the next one bye Ooh, that was a bit close